Hello everybody and um, welcome to this uh, little uh, live broadcast. Um, thank you for joining. Um, I uh, haven't tried this before so uh, it's the first for me uh, this way, uh, at least on YouTube. Uh, I have my, um, my YouTube running over here so I can see your comments and I will try to, to answer them on the way if I can. If I if they are scrolled out of my vision, you will have to um, to ask again. Uh, I will try to ask as uh, as many um, uh, as I can. But um, but let's see. Uh, Ollie, I'll, I'll, I will start to get into those things uh, later. So let's just um, let's just see. Um, okay, twenty two people are watching. Uh, Feel, feel free to ask questions and say hi, so I can see who's joining. Um, well, today uh, I plan um, to uh, give you a walkthrough of my paintbrush setup. Um, I like to start by making a bit of a disclaimer. I am not an airbrush expert. Uh, the skills I have is what I've picked up for the last uh, four years uh, painting Lewis. So um, most of this I've learned from, from uh, YouTube, as uh, you will now, but uh, also uh, I've picked uh, stuff up uh, on the way on my own. So if you are very skilled at airbrushing, you'll probably have a few good laughs, because, um, well, these might be uh, ways that I figured out myself, and uh, maybe they're not even a good idea, but um, at least I can help some, uh, skipping some corners, uh, to get going with their airbrushing. So I think what I'll do first is, and I will try to make a tour of my uh, airbrushing setup to uh, to show you what I have uh, going here. Okay, and um, we could start by uh, the compressor. The compressor I have using is uh, this one. It's a small one without an, an air tank. Uh, this means that uh, as every time I use the, the air gun, the compressor will have to run. So there's no break in that. As soon as you start spraying, the compressor will run. Um, this has an on and off switch. I'll just turn it off for now. This little one, I think, delivers uh, 23 liters of air each second um, at up to 5.5 uh, bar. Um, that is fine. I think uh, you, uh, some of the other ones have a little less, but this one is quite fine and it works very well. On the um, compressor you have the, I don't know what it's called in English, it uh, separates the water from the air. It is uh, something uh, physics when you uh, compress and decompress air, you will develop uh, condensation and uh, to avoid that from being sprayed out your airbrush, and uh, you have such a separator. If you spring a lot, um, you will have to uh, maybe uh, empty the, 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 the tank here, which is collecting the, the moist and uh, water, because um, you could end up um, having um, problems. And the last thing you want is for the, the, the airbrush to start uh, blowing water out, because that will uh, make the paint run and uh, you ruin that uh, paint job. Um, sometimes when I spray a lot I have, uh, have uh, problems that even with the, the, the separator I um, uh, still get a bit of uh, water through the hose. So uh, from now on I'm going to test this one, uh, not today, but um, afterwards, which is an extra separator that will filter with the water. And this one should be mounted directly on my airbrush gun uh, to maybe avoid a little extra. But it's mainly an issue when you are spraying a lot. Usually when I uh, start by priming a lot of lures and really uh, uh, pulling some air through the system, I will end up with a bit of water. So that is that. Apart from that, well, not much to say about that is this one. It has a regulator and um, when I spray, using this gun, which is a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. 
uh, I usually have the, the pressure between two on and three uh, bars, which would be something like 30 to 45 psi. If I'm spraying regular colors, uh, I normally just um, just have it at uh, two bars or 30 uh, psi. When I'm spraying heavy colors like uh, metallics and uh, stuff like that, I uh, usually crank up the the pressure a bit to get a better flow of the of the paint. I think um, that's about it for that one. I'll just put it back here. Um, well, I'll just. It's a bit hard to see. I can try to uh, roll it a bit here. I have this uh, little rack for all my gear here uh, on reels. And uh, as you can see, in one end, toilet paper, in the other end, an air, uh, a hairdryer to heat set the paint. We'll get on to that uh, later. So that's just my little uh, piece of furniture I made. Makes uh, life a bit easier. So I'll just uh, get back to that. Okay, let's uh, get on to the, the airbrush. Well, uh, this is the airbrush I, I use. Um, this is the, the airbrush I use. Uh, this is an Ivata airbrush. And I have one with a 0 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Uh, this probably isn't very accurate if you want to do a lot of uh, of um, hand painted uh, things, uh, but for me it's it's more than than um, adequate for for the for the paint jobs I do, and uh, with the 0 0.5 millimeter nozzles, I think um, it's much easier to get the paint flowing, and I don't need to thin it out as much. And if you use very thin paint, you'll also have to be very aware that you don't spray on too much at a time because then it will start running. So with this one I can have the, the, the paint fairly thick uh, and uh, get on with the job uh, rather fast. But you can use less. Uh, prior to this one I used this one which is a 0.3 millimeter and it works quite fine in most uh, cases except those uh, metallic colors, those um, those can be uh, very hard, and uh, when I switched to this one, I actually found that and much uh, easier. Switch to a bigger nozzle and uh, cranking up the pressure a bit, then I have a nice flow on the uh, metallic colors as well. I can see that um, uh, Bogdan uh, asked a question. Yes, you can. You can use uh, less pressure with no problem. Uh, it, it depends. I, I also crank it down a bit if I have to do details, uh, and I can do those even with the, the bigger nozzle. But but in most cases, uh, I I use stencils more than I use hand painting. So uh, for that purpose, I I just want uh, heavy colors and just um, just paint it right away. Okay, those were the basics, and everybody that that you need this you need. There's no way around that. Apart from that, many of you have, uh, many people have asked me about my little uh, uh, spray paint cabin here, and uh, it isn't really that um, advanced. Uh, if we turn it over and look at the label here, you can see it comes directly out of the IKEA catalog. Uh, this is a, a, a bin for, uh, I think, sorting things could be closed. It comes with a lid that you can flip up in one end, but um, I bought this for something else, but I found out that by turning it this way, I actually have a very nice little cabin for my spray paint. Um, the, the handle here, the, the, the holder here is just one I made out of an aluminum pipe. There's a camera holder here because uh, people want to see what I'm doing. Uh, and apart from that, I just uh, I put in some wallpaper, which I spray my logo onto, uh, to just uh, suck up some of the moisture and paint that uh, lands here, so I don't have to clean it up uh, as often. 
Uh, actually, I cleaned it today, so you can see it's nice and uh, white. So, of course, there's one problem when you're spraying a lot. There's no uh, ventilation of this one. It doesn't uh, suck out uh, the air or anything. So what I blow in will come back out in my face. And that's why when I, especially when I prime and do larger surfaces, I always wear a mask to um, not to in, in, inhale all those paints. Um, acrylic paint isn't really uh, uh, dangerous for you. It's the same you use for painting your 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 house uh, inside the walls and so on. But uh, no no need to to inhale it uh, directly. So use a mask um, when you're painting or find something more advanced than this one and make a, a, a ventilation system for that one. Um, I know at, at some point I have uh, considered if I, if I could make something, but we'll get back to that another time, I think. Apart from that, I use my little uh, office lamp here and I just uh, put that on top of uh, my my box here, and then I have a nice little uh, place to um, to paint my lures. Um, so that one is a nice thing to have if you're going to uh, paint at the office, like I do. Um, so, well, if you have a, a, a nice shed or something, or you might not uh, need one of those. I know that many people are just sitting in. On, on it by a desk and, and doing this. Okay, uh, apart from that, what would we need next? Also, um, as many of you have seen, when you're painting, you only have two hands. One of them is holding the airbrush. If the other one also always has to, to hold the, the bait, uh, it's a bit um, annoying. So I uh, have these holders that I'm using and um, I just uh, use them for my lures like this. Um, these holders you can buy in some hardware stores, at least here in Denmark. They're called a third hand uh, and they are made for, for soldering, uh, for people that uh, solder. Um, and there's actually, uh, you can, you can, uh, there's an, a magnifier you can attach to it. I don't need that one for this, but they're very nice and handy and uh, helps you a lot when you're uh, handling the lures. Um, so, a few holders. There's another way to, um, to hold the lures. And uh, I know that, that many people uh, are using this uh, simply by adding a, a, a screw eye to, to a holder here and uh, screw it into where the, the front eye of the lure is supposed to sit, or the rear if you want to. And then you can just use this one, and um, I use those for my my, uh, my key hangers here. And I'll just uh, made a, a piece of uh, wood with some holes in, so every time I'm finished with something, I can just uh, put it to rest here and let it dry. These ones are actually just some uh, plastic pipes, uh, with a bit of uh, resin uh, in the end where I have, uh, uh, could you say, glued on a, a, a screw eye. So I can just uh, screw that one in and uh, then remove it afterwards and uh, replace it by whatever is uh, going to sit there. If, we, if it was a lure, I would just replace it by a fresh screw eye. But um, that would be a, another point. I'll just um, set those away. Um, yes, well, apart from that, what do we need? I have these uh, dispensers, one with water and one with um, with alcohol. The water I use is not... Uh, here in Denmark we have a lot of calcium in the water, so that I, I wouldn't want that uh, to, uh, to clog up my, my airbrush. So uh, I use water from the, the, the clothes uh, dryer, the dryer. I have a condensation close dryer, so I can have that, use that. That uh, has removed the most, uh, most of it uh, calcium, so I just use that. But if you're living in an area with uh, not as much calcium in the water, you can just uh, use that. 
bought, uh, bought these uh, nice dispenser bottles and uh, on Ali, um, and those are really really useful for uh, for containing these. I use them also for my resin and stuff. Very nice and very handy. Apart from that, cleaning uh, the the airbrush, I have one of these which also has a holder um, and um, can. Um, I hold uh, a lot of paint. Um, then, of course, uh, some um, cotton swabs to uh, to clean uh, the airbrush. I'll I'll go through the the cleaning of the airbrush later, but uh, those can be very handy for for some of the parts. So I have some of those standing around. Then I have this one, which contains a little cup. On which I pour in all the uh, leftover colors and uh, cleaning fluids. Apart from that, I have a little suction uh, pipette, uh, whatever it's called, and uh, some brushes. The brushes I both use both uh, use those for for cleaning uh, the cup, uh, but also use them to uh, to mix the the colors. Uh, you could also use a toothpick or a, a or maybe uh, uh, the, the cotton swab with the cotton part uh, cut off, but uh, I find that the pencil is very, it does a very good job on the mixing. Um, so I usually use uh, such a brush here. Okay. Anything we haven't been through? Okay. It's always nice to have some gloves. It's not always I use them, I must admit. Sometimes I, uh, I just use 10 minutes uh, washing my hands afterwards. It's not that difficult to get uh, the paint off. Uh, I can see there's one from Dubai here asking what colors. Uh, I will go through the colors. I can do that. Uh, you can see here I have my box of colors. And actually I'm... I'm there isn't a specific brand I'm, I'm uh, using uh, only. I use um, actually more or less what I find and uh, what I think uh, could be nice uh, of the colors. Um, I use these magic colors, in especially the, the, the white and the black. Okay, that's a bit hard to see. I'll just see if I can scroll back a bit here. Magic colors. This black color from matte color is in, has insanely much pigment a, a, a tenth of a drop will make everything almost black it's insane so well be very careful when you're mixing and just want to darken other thing i'll just leave a drop on some paper and i'll take a brush and just gently take a bit of the black over to the cup because um, otherwise it will be way too dark Okay, that was uh, some of them. Then here is my, well, actually I, I have a whole set of it uh, because I, I just uh, bought those. This is Createx and this is their pearlized color uh, set. I love it. They're, the only color I haven't emptied several bottles of is the blue one because I don't make that many blue things. But apart from that, every other color is fantastic for, for many um, many things, especially the green one. The green one is uh, great. So I use Createx for that. Apart from that, what do we have? A, be a bit of uh, Valero here. Wicked colors. Anything else? Auto Air. Well, many different colors. Oh. Um, nothing is especially good. Um, it's a bit different how much you have to thin, thin the, the, um, the colors. Some of them are almost like uh, like uh, yeah glue or something. It's very very thick and they need to be uh, thinned a lot. Usually you would want it to be... I, I, they, I've read and, and seen many places that they said it should be like um, like skim milk, but um, I generally would go for something more like cream, a, a, a thick, uh, flowing um, consistency. But but 
Find out what works for you. It depends on the nozzle size and um, the air pressure. So if you are using very little nozzle size, uh, size like uh, 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters, you will have to thin it up a bit more. And then you will have to be careful to only spray on a little and dry up afterwards uh, with the, with the hairdryer uh, to make sure that it doesn't start running. Um, okay, so I just got around to mention you also need some uh, thinner. Um, this is Createx. I think I have another brand as well. Uh, Wicked Color. I am not sure it really matters, and I haven't experienced that that one brand will won't work with the other colors. So uh, just uh, just buy one and. Um, and use that one. So I, I can't really say that you should use this and that. Um, okay, I'll just um, apart from that. I usually have uh, all these uh, little cups I use for for uh, for uh, mixing more colors, uh, specific specific colors if I want. Usually I just uh, mix the colors in uh, in the cup, but sometimes if I know I'm going used to to the, the color for for an, for another paint session, uh, I will I will use uh, these. They come with a with a lid on them. I can see. Oh, there's one here. You can see they, they come with a little lid, so you can easily uh, mix up a a, a, a a bit and and uh, just uh, save it for later. It can hold for for uh, for a long time. I haven't had problems uh, drying out with that one. So I'll just get rid of all the colors here. Okay, and I just missed one thing. As I said earlier, well, when you're painting, you might need this one. Depends on a bit on, on how quick you're painting and uh, how much you thin up your your paint. Uh, usually, if you're painting uh, quite quick and and uh, put on a lot of paint, you should stop once in a while and uh, give it a quick hair um, a blow with the hairdryer to heat set it a bit. Otherwise, you will end up with so much paint that it will start running at some point um, and you will ruin your lure. So. If you figure out how it works, you will you'll learn that at some point uh, you'll figure out when to, uh, when to uh, dry the, the lure before you go on. Uh, Toddy asked if I use anything uh, different for the base coat. And actually, uh, at some point I bought something which was supposed to be a surface primer. And... Um, it really didn't work for me. This one all, always clogged up my, my airbrush and uh, I, I, I didn't think it, that it had pigment enough so I had to, to give it a lot of layers. So actually I ended up uh, using uh, the magic color pen for, for, the, for the base coat and, and priming uh, uh, as well. And um, it's, it's not that expensive and uh, it really covers uh, well so, so I used that one for, for that. Okay, what else, what else? Well, a nice thing you can do if you are uh, experimenting a bit on on, uh, on your patterns and, and your lures is to make some dummies like these ones. Uh, these ones are some I've just made out of uh, pieces of, um, of balsa and uh, glued them to a stick here. Um, and they're very nice uh, to have if you're testing out a new pattern to see if it's uh, if it's getting uh, the way you like it, or, or if if the the stencil you made is working, then it, these are really nice to have, and they're very easy to just paint white again and then use another time. Uh, and this way, you won't uh, actually ruin a, a lure that could be something else by painting it a, a color that that you didn't want. As you can see, I have a a few uh, tests running on this one. Uh, which I haven't uh, painted white yet. So you can just use this one 
paint it white and then use it again. Very easy and uh, you don't uh, ruin a lure and have to start over on that for that. So that's a nice thing to have if you're testing or playing around with colors and patterns. Okay, I just need a piece, uh, drink of water here. Createx Paul is saying that he finds Createx Perlite to remain sticky. Um, I haven't experienced that. I've used the 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 Createx Perlite colors was the, was the I think it was the first color I bought, and I have used it extensively uh, for the last five, four years. Never uh, experienced it to be uh, sticky. Um, of course, if you're painting a, a very thick layer, you'll have to uh, let it uh, dry for, for uh, once you're finished with the whole lure, you'll have to let it dry thoroughly for, for a day or two before uh, coating the, the lure. So, depending on how thick a layer you, you put on, uh, it might be, be sticky for a while. Uh, and also, you have to be very careful. Uh, if you are painting a lot of layers and, and moving along fast and uh, then applying some, some sort of masking tape and, and stuff like that, while the paint has not had time to, to uh, perfectly harden, so you will very easily pull off the, the patterns you are doing and, and ruining uh, everything. So be aware of that. Okay, we have another draw here in my little... Uh, compartment and uh, this one is the one that uh, that holds all my stencils and masks and everything most of them are, are uh, you have already seen in uh, in my movies so uh, there, there's not much to say about it but uh, we have all the the hard ones which are made out of uh, some uh, some uh, metal net. Actually, I think I have a piece of it somewhere. Just bought a new one. Well, I have one up here anyway. Piece of uh, net like this one, metal, uh, and it is called um, or it is called expanded metal mesh. mesh I think. It actually is a, a, a metal plate that has very a, a lot of small uh, uh, slices done to it, and then they pull it apart and make uh, this. And it really gives you a, a great uh, scale uh, imprint when uh, painting through that. So this one is really my favorite, and I use it for any lure that uh, needs scales that are matching the, the size for the, for the net here. Apart from that, on the on the mesh side, I have something. It's a bit missing here. I have this one, which is some uh, mosquito net to put in a window frame. It's uh, with uh, square holes in it. Um, you can use that. Usually, I just uh, turn them 45 degrees, and uh, they look a bit like scales. Actually, as you can see, uh, that is what I use for my uh, my pencil uh, and uh, with the mosquito net on that one. Apart from that, I've picked up some uh, mesh from other places where I just uh, stumble over it. So I have some of this uh, hex mesh. mesh. Uh, I think uh, this was from a beach chair. I uh, cut it off before I threw it out, but. You can find mesh or, or the likes for, for scale prints uh, um, everywhere around you. Just uh, keep your eye open and, uh, and uh, then you can find something to, to use for, for a scale mesh. Um, what else do we have? Well, as many of you know, all my, um, my thermoformed stencils here these are really great for those uh, art-shaped uh, lures and, and uh, things. 
sorry, uh, I just saw there was a question from Paul here. No, I didn't buy the the, the metal mesh uh, mesh on uh, on eBay. I bought it in a local hardware store, and uh, and uh, I'm I don't think that they uh, they ship abroad, so I can't really help you on that. But uh, you should search uh, Google for for expanded metal mesh or expanded uh, metal plate or something like that, and you will find those. With uh, maybe with uh, diamond-shaped uh, holes or something like that, but uh, um, well, try to to um, to see if you can find it. And if you are really can't, I might uh, be able to send you some. Of course, you pay me a bit of money for it, but uh, we can get back to that another time. Well, the the thermoform. Stencils for the odd shaped lures and those are specifically used for my uh, my fish um, key holders here. Those are great for that because it uh, makes the job a lot easier. I have a lot of those. Apart from that, like any other, of course, I have a bag here with um, all my normal stencils, if you can say so. Anything I do is normal, I don't know. And, well, all different kinds. There is uh, some uh, gill plates and the mouth parts for my spoon. There's some perch stripes uh, with a bit of mesh glued onto it. There is some uh, tiger perch pattern here. And, well, these are all homemade. Uh, I uh, the plastic I'm using is um, is what is used for overhead projectors. I don't know if the young people today even know what an overhead projector is because I don't think they're used for anything anymore. But it's uh, thin plastic sheets. Um, and uh, the way they were used, used earlier was that you painted on with a with a marker, and then you could have it uh, uh, put up on the wall, uh, just like you would today with a projector. But well, I have a, a package lying around, and I use those for all my my stencils here, all the different stuff, um, many many. Uh, well, there's a lot of those. If you can't get those, I don't know, know if they're for sale anymore, but probably, or go to a, go to a, a bookstore and ask for them. But if they don't have them or they're very expensive, you actually can buy uh, sheets of plastic that are meant for uh, for stencils. Um, they uh, they look something like this. And um, in fact, it's uh, more or less the same. I think these are are just not uh, transparent. Well, uh, yes, TJ, that's a good idea as well. Well, it's it's only your your um, your imagination that sets the limits. Uh, uh, in in uh, rolling some some uh, string around the lure would, is a very good idea give you a, a, a quite a unique pattern um, so that's a good idea I might use it thank you if I may well as the other one um, you can cut these out with a scissor or usually I just use a scalpel or a, 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 a knife um, I forgot what they call but uh, you know the the usual Stanley knife uh, here, or a scalpel. Scalpels are nice and sharp uh, for those uh, smaller details. But um, apart from that, you don't need them much. Anything else in here? Well, masking tape. I have different types. You're using masking tapes. Be careful when you pull it off. If the, the, the paint hasn't had the, enough time to, to dry or to, to settle or the surface of the lure is very slick, 
you easily pull off the paint and you ruin the lure. So be very careful. Actually, you don't want it to be uh, very uh, sticky, but still sticky enough to stay there while you are uh, while you are uh, painting. Yes, Toddy, you can use laminated pouches as well. I know that I've heard that before. Uh, oh yes, you can. Uh, okay, those um, heat heat laminating pouches. Yes, those those can be very. They they can uh, give you uh, different. Um, you can get them in different thickness and and uh, depending on on how uh, firm you want them. And actually, I considered for a long time if those could be used for uh, for thermoforming uh, stencils, uh, as they have some of the the same um, um, physics as as the plastic. But I found uh, finally found the the one on uh, I think um, Amazon uh, the the right stuff that was meant for for uh, thermoforming, and uh, I must say that, that those works great. Uh, even though they are maybe a bit expensive, but well, sometimes it costs a bit. But once you've made those stencils, um, they will work forever, and uh, you can just clean them off uh, and use them again and again. Okay, okay, okay. Do I have any more things to show you that would be interesting? Um, yes, maybe. Once in a while. Some details simply aren't just worth making a stencil of. Uh, very small details. Um, so for some things, I use uh, pens. These pens are called Posca pens, and um, they actually um, used by adding uh, paint. It's not. It's not like uh, an alcohol-based uh, pen. It's uh, Adding some a bit of paint, uh, which is uh, uh, not transparent, and I use those for a few things uh, where I f find it uh, very, uh, very easy, much easier than to make a, a, a stencil. Uh, for one thing, uh, I use those for my uh, for the, the yellow spots on my uh, little fat pike here. Uh, that's the post posca pen for that one. And also on my some of my other lures for uh, dots and uh, other minor details. And if you uh, want to handwrite something on your lures, these can also be worked. Just um, usually um, you can just uh, write on it. If you are writing stuff in hand, I would advise you to do that after you have given the lure the first coat of epoxy. If you do that, you can. If you make a mistake, you can easily wipe it off without having to start over on the paint job as well. Um, just an, uh, you can use alcohol to dissolve it again and uh, wipe it off. That's a good idea. So it might save you an extra, extra one for it. Uh, no, Bogdan. Uh, they can be. They can't be refilled. I just uh, you need to buy a new one. I don't think it's. I think they would cost something around uh, four to five uh, U.S. dollars in that kind of thing here in Denmark, which is very expensive. So, depending on where you live, it could be uh, even more uh, expensive or cheaper. I don't know. Uh huh. Well. Any questions before I um, I go on? There's uh, about uh, 10 seconds delay, so if I sit and stare for 10 seconds, it's because I'm trying to see if you are answering. <laughs> so um, I'll just uh, have a drink of water. Okay. Um, one thing I think I could do, which I think that um, just a 
I'll just leave, just grab this uh, question from William. Uh, is it cheaper to make your own lures than buying them? Um, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not sure, depending on how many you make. Usually I would say that if you make more than you can use yourself, you might it might be cheaper. But if you look at the equipment and all the stuff you have to buy, you'll end up using just as many money as if you just went down to the shop and bought some lures. When that is said, there's nothing that beats catching fish on your own lures. It's a fantastic feeling. It's nothing beats uh, other people's uh, reaction to your lures and uh, the pride you feel when you have a good lure and uh, the uh, and all that stuff. So, if you look at time and money spent on making your own lures, I don't think it's the way to go if you're going to do it to save money. That said, you can save money making your own lures, but you'll have to cut some corners, you'll have to use materials that are less um, expensive, and in the end, I think you'll uh, end up thinking that maybe it was uh, a better idea to uh, use the, the extra money. And I think once the, the hobby of making your own lures evolves, you will end up buying all this, this stuff anyway, and uh, you won't have saved any money. But, yes, like Bogdan writes, it's a passion, it's not a business. I, I'm fairly certain that very few persons that make handmade lures uh, can make enough to live from it, uh, at least not here in Denmark. It, 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 it cannot be done. You should do it for a hobby, you should do it as a passion, and you should uh, enjoy every fish you catch and every finished lures. Maybe even just hanging on your on your wall uh, to to uh, uh, in, enjoy you every time you look at it. So don't do it for the money. I think. Well, I just uh, think there was one thing that I could um, give you a bit of walkthrough is how I uh, usually clean my my brush. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're uh, new to airbrushing, uh, of course, because many of the other ones uh, my, uh, uh, you might already uh, know this. Uh, first of all, between each column, you can just clean up the, the, the airbrush with the water. You just, I just uh, normally just uh, put in a bit of water hold my finger in front of the nozzle to uh, so that the bubbles will be sent back up to the chamber and it will create bubbles. Be a little bit careful because it will actually come up um, if you have enough pressure on it, it will start bubbling everywhere and if you're near the lure that you just painted you don't want water sprayed over that one. So be a little bit careful. So put blow some bubbles the other way you can uh, then blow some water the other way. I just need to turn on the compressor. So back and forward, and uh, with the rest of the the water left, I'll just uh, pull that out and then add more until I'm satisfied that the water is clean. If you're using some colors, it might be easy. If you're using the black one from Magic Color, that will take five minutes maybe to change colors because it's just that much pigment in that one. Okay, that would be what I do between each color normally. Sometimes you're you're um, when you're spraying and you just suddenly it it doesn't have the same flow anymore. Maybe it. Uh, it, it, it uh, comes out in, in bursts or it just stops uh, coming out and you start to figuring out why that. It doesn't take much if you're uh, if there's a, a, a flake or some skin sometimes, especially if you don't have the, the lid on your airbrush here, they can, they can and, and you are doing something else so you are, are busy for a while, then there can be a 
a thin area where the, the, the paint dries and you have just like uh, on your on your source you have uh, some skin and if that gets stuck in, in the in the canal or in, in the nozzle uh, well then the paint stop running and it may be uh, able to get a little bit of paint through but uh, not always. Sometimes you can uh, clean that out by the normal way. One other thing you can do then you have to move a bit away again from your lure is if you take off the, the rear part of your air gun here, loosen the one and just pull back the, the needle a, a few centimeters and do the same again. Then the canal down here will be uh, uh, completely open and even larger parts uh, will be able to blow back on those ones. But uh, I'll see if as you can see when I do this, I don't know if it's visible, but it really blows some air up, so water is everywhere. So be careful when you're doing that, but that's a way to get around uh, those uh, tricky uh, things. If, if, the, if your, your spray isn't uh, fluid uh, continuously, uh, okay? You can see I still have um, some white from when I primed before, okay? If that doesn't help, if you're still having problems getting a continuous flow on the on the, the paint, and it doesn't help to crank up the, the, the air pressure a bit and everything, nothing is working, well, then there's nothing left to do but to do a thorough clean. Um, and that means to um, to uh, dis uh, the, to to take the the air uh, aircon a, a little bit apart. First of all, I always pull out the needle because you don't want the tip of the needle to be bent. That will be uh, ruined, and you will have to buy a new one. So take out the needle first. Then you can uh, screw off the front of the of the, um, the pistol here. That one is the one that makes sure that the, uh, the paint and, and uh, air is uh, mixed. Out here in the end is a little thing uh, which is the nozzle itself. When you bought your airbrush there was a tiny little wrench widget and uh, you can use that to um, to loosen the, the the nozzle here and screw that on. Be careful with that one, it really easily gets away and uh, I've spent uh, numerous hours uh, crawling on the floor looking for that one. Okay, and then it's uh, you can start uh, cleaning everything up uh, thoroughly. I can uh, let a little bit of water run through. I have a uh, some tiny little brushes I can use to uh, to clean the canal where the paint is supposed to run, and you can easily see if you have some of those uh, skin or flakes on, on on it. So if you find that, you will know why the everything wasn't working. Rinse it afterwards, like that. The nozzle itself can be cleaned uh, by using. A thing like this, that must be hard to, for you to see. It's it's a needle specific, specific for this purpose. It has the, the right angle uh, to fit, uh, to match the, the, the angle, uh, the, the point of the needle has. And then on one side it has been filed flat, which will allow you to scrape the inside of the nozzle. So you carefully put the nozzle onto this one and you can turn it around, scraping off any uh, dried paint or paint uh, leftovers like that. They would be sitting here and you can see if you scrape something out then you know why everything wasn't working. And then after that you can just uh, screw on the, the nozzle again like that. Use the wrench. No need to tighten it very hard. Just uh, 
Because if you're doing this a lot of times, and you will if you are painting a lot, if you tighten it a lot every time, well, at some point you will ruin it. So just do that. Put on the, the tip again. Put on the needle. Tighten the knot here. And if I um, can just like this. Cleaning up the, the brush like this, the thorough clean, I do that after every paint session to make sure that next time I start, everything is working perfectly. I have only have one or two times where I have to redo it or actually take uh, the airbrush gun uh, further apart to clean up um, other parts. So usually the, the only thing that remains is that in here the, 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 the needle runs in here and if old dry paint is sitting there the needle will move less smoothly uh, along the way. So I take those apart and I use a little brush or like this one which is actually a teeth uh, thing cleaner in between the teeth you can use that to clean up that canal and then it works as perfectly again. I think if, every, if you clean up your air gun thoroughly every time, I'm pretty certain that you will almost feel it like it's new every time. There's nothing, when, when you first get the air gun and, and you just say, well, everything just runs so smooth in this one. Well, it can't do that again if you clean it up thoroughly. So consider that if things ain't running, stop clean up the gun thoroughly and it will be much better after that. Uh, sorry, did a lot of talking, didn't uh, look at answers. Uh, you're welcome, Matt. Uh, uh, these are called, I think they're called squeeze bottles or something like that. Lap bottles, yes, squeeze, squeeze, there's something like squeeze. Uh, Nikolai, yes, I'm uh, Danish. Uh, yes, William, I am. <laughs> uh, well, just uh, keep coming on with some more questions if you want to. Um, as I wrote in the, in the text for this uh, live stream, I'm going to make a basic lure making video about my airbrush setup. Um, still knowing that I'm far from an expert on the matter, uh, I th still think that uh, this is one of the, the things that uh, newcomers to, to lure making can, uh, can, uh, can learn a lot from uh, and uh, help them on with their lure making, so uh, I'll do that. Okay, is there anything I have forgotten to tell you? Is there anything you want to know about uh, airbrushing? Um, please let me know. Uh, lubricant, uh, no, I don't use any uh, mat. I don't use anything um, of uh, lubricant. Uh, I've seen people that used uh, a bit of uh, of Vaseline to, to uh, smoothen the, the, the parts, but as I'm going to use um, epoxy later on, I wouldn't want any kind of uh, uh, grease uh, sprayed onto my lure because that would completely ruin my, my epoxy. So I uh, use as little as possible and that's also why I only cl uh, mostly clean with water and, and maybe if, if if it's very dried uh, paint, uh, I use a bit of alcohol because that seems to help up, uh, um, help the, the, the dissolve the, the paint. Uh, but apart from that, just water. Dan uh, Udvining, uh, sorry, uh, as a weighing, Dan, do you mean how about weighing in the Lewis, the, the weight? Need just uh, the weights of the lure. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, yes, Bogdan, uh, I, uh, I intend to do that. Well, Hugh Essel wants me to give you a shout out. Well, that's done now, I think. Um, weighing in the lures, I think um, it's, it's hard to say shortly how you can uh, uh, place weight in your lures. There's a lot of, uh, lot of things to consider when you're weighing in your lures because it, it depends a lot on, on, uh, on uh, what you're using as material, how, how uh, floating is that, how, what, the, what the buoyancy of, of the, the material you're using, the shape of the lure uh, and the, the, the wanted movement. So it's a bit difficult to give some, some um, precise advice. Generally I would say that if you yeah, I don't know. It's it's a bit hard. When I weighed in my, my lures, I had a, a specific uh, wish for those. Uh, if we take um, the, the, the jerk here, uh, the weight for this lure, uh, this is made in resin, 10% uh, uh, glass bubbles by weight, and the weight for this one is placed all out here, 5 grams for this lure only, five grams of weight and it's placed all the way out here. Still in the water with hooks uh, attached, it will be sitting uh, at the surface like that. Maybe a bit tipping the nose downward. Once I start jerking, it will jerk down in the water to some depth around maybe a meter or something like that. But that would be specific for this um, lure and for this uh, build. So if you have a, a lure that is thicker or uh, something else, or if you want uh, uh, maybe to be a surface lure, you will think otherwise, you will have to think that maybe the lure should uh, be uh, uh, heaviest at the, the end for you. As, as soon as you start pulling, it will pull up instead of down. So it's, it's a bit hard to say. It depends a lot on, on the lure and the shape, I think. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, 10% glass bubbles isn't uh, too heavy. Uh, with 10% glass bubbles, uh, gla the glass bubbles is more or less air. If you, if you, um, if the resin itself is sinking, if you add, if I have uh, for for the the jerk, I have about 27 grams of the resin. If I add 2.7 grams of glass bubbles, in volume that would be around the same amount as half uh, the half of the uh, volume of the the other parts. So it actually uh, is uh, only weighing uh, two-thirds for some weight. So it's actually a, very, a, a lot of buoyancy you get from 10% uh, glass bubbles. I think that also, but also it's, it's more or less the max you can use on the resin unless you uh, have to uh, be careful how you mix it because uh, with, uh, if, if you mix one part with uh, with 10% of the glass bubbles, which will actually be 20% as it's only half of the resin, it gets very thick. And uh, the thicker it gets, the, the, the longer it takes when you put in part two to mix it up thoroughly and make sure that uh, it's completely uh, uh, mixed. And that's very uh, important to get it thoroughly mixed or you will get some uh, problems. The lure I showed you, uh, Weighs uh, 35 grams, I think. Hi, my uh, Macy. Mel Lewis. Hello. Sorry. Um, the glass bubbles due to the resin durability. Well, um, 
the the class bubbles will make the 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 yeah, how can I say it? Actually, it gets a little more like wood. It is like soft wood. It it, it would be it would be um, uh, it's easier to carve. It's uh, it's uh, a little more crisp, but easier to handle. Um, but uh, I think once anyway, you you have to to add a, a few layers of uh, epoxy, or I do for my my pipe baits, and then uh, I don't think it's a, a problem with the durability for the for the by the by the added uh, glass bubbles. Um, Daniel asked if I ever do jerk baits in wood anymore. Yeah, I do, uh, not as much anymore. Uh, often because uh, I actually uh, very much uh, like the freedom of um, of being able to completely reproduce the same uh, uh, bait uh, and just play around with the colors and the weight. But sometimes, especially uh, doing the the first master. I usually make a, a few uh, of of them in in wood first, um, because it's uh, it, it gives me a little bit time to to just uh, test around and see if the movement if, if I can make the movement right or or the design simply isn't working. Uh, and uh, if I if I have to do it in resin, I would have to make a silicone mold, and I would have to to go all the way, and that way. I would, um, I would actually uh, almost already have have made it a large scale without knowing if if the the jerk bait uh, was any good. So, if usually I make my masters in in wood, uh, at least for for jerk baits and crank baits. Uh, Bogdan, yes, that is uh, thirty. No, that's thirty five grams in all with. Uh, the finished lure with uh, weights and epoxy and everything. So, yeah. Any more questions? We've been at it for uh, just about an hour now. Well, feel free to ask any questions. Other, also, other than uh, airbrushing, I can. Uh, we'll see if I can answer while I'm at it. Well, it's funny to watch yourself uh, 10 minutes, uh, 10 seconds later. Okay. Well, I think uh, the time has uh, gone that far. The first lure I made, mm, TJ, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I've made lures for my whole life. Um, Way back when I lived at my parents, I made uh, it was more or less uh, spoons and casting lures uh, for uh, sea trout. I made uh, bobbers for uh, and floats for uh, roach fishing and uh, and um, perch and and so on. I, I I've made lures like crazy for a long long time and. Um, then, then I have a, had a, a, a period where I didn't uh, make uh, make as much, but now uh, I'm, I've, I've gone all in for this hobby again because I really love it. Do I make poppers? Uh, no, I haven't tried making poppers. Actually, mostly because I don't feel that any of the waters I fish are very good for poppers, but I might be wrong. You never know. You often see uh, in, in the brackish waters, which are very shallow, you often see fish in the surface. So they probably would attack a, a popper as well. And uh, it could be fun to try it at some point. Um, so so I wouldn't say that I never will do it, but um, I just haven't done it yet. Well, Toddy, you are welcome. I hope it was very well uh, helpful. Anything else before we um, we close the deal? Take a glass of water. I think of water for me.
Well, then um, I think I'll just uh, say thank you for this time. I am uh, think it was uh, quite funny. Had uh, up to about 36 people watching, which is uh, quite fine, I think. I uh, hope you found it um, helpful and uh, probably uh, heard a lot of A's and E uh as um, I stumble for words. But still, I uh, hope it was helpful and I uh, think uh, at least uh, you helped me uh, by answering uh, all the questions I need uh, for my my basic lure making uh, video about the, the airbrush. Um, so, um, well, I think I'll finish it here, I'm, uh, and then uh, I promise you I won't be long before I'm back with something. Um, and I think this won't be the, the last uh, live show I do. I think it's uh, very nice, and it's uh, very uh, nice to, to uh, have all your uh, comments and questions uh, coming in. Um, I don't know what will be next, but uh, I will announce it on my Facebook page and of course uh, like this one. Maybe some of you could answer, did you get a notification about the from YouTube regarding the, the, the live cast? Uh, did you get it uh, today or did you get it? Uh, I, I made the, the schedule one and a half day ago approximately, so did you get a, a a notification there? Yes, Mika says. That's uh, nice. I, uh, well, it's it's uh, funny uh, doing these things. Uh, not everything is described in YouTube. You don't really know how everything is working. But um, I hope uh, I hope it works fine, and uh, I hope to get a better camera. I don't know if the quality is good and the lighting is good, but uh, I've done my best to get the best lighting here in the office. And I think I'll find a better camera soon. I would just make sure that this actually works before I went ahead and used some money. Okay, Toddy got the notification yesterday. Pesh Attic, uh, I'm sorry, my French isn't very good. I will have to, <laughs> I will have to use uh, Google on that one. Bogdan didn't get notified, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Daniel was out fishing, yeah, well, if it, I would have loved to be. Actually, here in Denmark, the pikes are preserved now, so it, it really comes hard to see everywhere else people catching large pikes. But we'll have to live with that. Hopefully the, the, the preservation um, helps and uh, we get lots of pikes to catch. Uh, what time is it there? Okay, well, I'll end here. Thank you a lot for watching and um, I hope you see me soon. Go on out. I would love to join Marcy, but uh, I think um, I think the trip to uh, Ireland is a bit too long. Well, 